Moving on to our second radiation law, uh, the Stefan Boltzmann law. Uh, this uh, is the relationship between a star's temperature and its luminosity. This equation does not make that very clear. So I'd like to recast this equation in terms of luminosity, which is the quantity that we'll come back to again and again. Um, just to let you know, this Greek letter sigma represents the Stefan Boltzmann constant. This is just a physical constant. Okay, so coming back to luminosity, the way that we get luminosity is by multiplying what we call the energy flux, which is the energy per unit area by the star's area. And since a star is spherical in shape, then its area is given by four times pi times its radius squared. So then the luminosity of a star is four pi r squared times the Stefan Boltzmann constant times its temperature to the fourth power. And just to give you a feel for the different sizes of stars we might encounter, dwarf stars like our sun are about the size of our sun or smaller. Uh, giant stars are 10 to 100 times the size of our sun and supergiants 100 to 1000 times. So um, just thinking about this equation and uh, the, the proportionality to radius and temperature, which one do you think actually influences the luminosity more? Okay, so you've staked your claim. You're thinking of your reasoning. Don't share it with me now. I'm gonna ask you two more questions and then we'll return to this. All right, so the first question I want to ask is now think about just two stars that have the same temperature, but one star is twice as uh, big as the other, it has twice the radius. Then how does its luminosity compare? If one star is twice as big as the other, then we are doubling this radius. Two squared is four, exactly. All right, so um, same question, but asking about the other variable, let's say that instead we have two stars that are the same size, but one of them has three times the temperature of the other. Uh, what happens to its luminosity now? Right, yep, exactly. So the, um, the exponent, the power, means that we're taking that variable and multiplying by its, it by itself that many times. So in that case, we have three times three times three times three, which is the same as nine times nine, which is 81. So now coming back to my previous question about which um, variable you think influences the luminosity more, I'm not gonna re-pull you but does somebody have an argument for why you think the radius would be more important, the temperature would be more important, or are they both equally important? Uh, from my perspective, I also think that since the temperature is taken to the fourth power, small changes in temperature will have a bigger effect than the equivalent uh, magnitude of change in the size of the star. Coming back to some of what we saw in the activity, and I want to tie this, you know, mathematical representation of luminosity, this equation, to this graphical representation um, and ask you, based on what we can um, tell about star E and star C uh, from the graph, then which star is bigger? So because they have the same peak wavelength, that means they have the same temperature. Therefore, that variable is no longer uh, relevant to uh, thinking about the difference in luminosity for the two stars. Uh, the way that we get luminosity is by looking at the y-axis here, the energy output per second. And so star E has the higher luminosity. Since they have the same temperature, the only thing that could be different is their size. 